So I just finished watching A Quiet Place for the third time just this year. It's... And you know what? I've wanted to talk about this movie for a really long time. That minor injury that I talked about in my channel update a few months ago, that happened like the week before I went to go see A Quiet Place. And it really fucked up the silent movie series that I originally had because I had... A few more titles that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to review The Bear or The Thief or Quest for Fire or other non-dialogue oriented movies like that. But unfortunately, not only was I not allowed to sit around for longer periods of time, but I just felt a little fizzled out in terms of creativity when it came to putting out content on YouTube. But regardless, I saw the movie for the first time the weekend it came out. And I had a complete blast, more than I usually would with any other horror movie. And after a month of thinking about it, I knew that I needed to go see it again to have a concrete opinion about it. Because I was thinking, well, this works, but wait, what about this? Do I remember? I gotta go back and look over it again. So a friend of mine went and saw it a month later. It was my second time and his first. And in all honesty, in terms of the su suspense... It was even better the second time around. And much to my surprise, man, my friend really enjoyed it because he's not usually a horror movie fan either, but we both had a pretty good time with it. We love to delve into the hidden meanings and talk about, like, the scare techniques. And now that it's finally on Blu-ray, my mom and I just sat down and watched it. My third time, her first. And again, she's not a horror movie fan. She's pretty easy to scare... She won't watch anything horror-oriented unless it's Walking Dead, but both of us saw it. We freaked out out loud. We had a really good time. And even though she said that she wasn't going to be able to sleep tonight, she didn't sound all that bummed out about it. So, right off the bat, you can honestly tell that I love this movie, and it's probably my favorite of the year so far. And I am going to talk about it a little more in depth, so I am going to talk about some spoilers. Not all of them, obviously, but just little pinpoints in order to address my opinion. But you know what? This could be my favorite horror movie so far. And I, again, I'm not usually for horror movies because of the same reasons most people are. Because the characters are usually idiots. The scares are mostly just bursts of loud sound and music for things that are just false alarms like a cat for some reason trapped in the closet or some shit like that and yeah the character mistakes especially are the things that bum me out the most about horror movies and even though in this film a lot of the scares do come from mistakes that characters made these mistakes are intentional for a very specific reason and that is the reason Anything bad happens to kids and parents feel responsible over it is because of mistakes they made for assuming that they know exactly what to do, but they don't. And when something like this ever happens, they go completely overboard, they overprotect their children to the point where it just alienates them, and that's exactly what happens in this movie. And that's the whole message behind A Quiet Place. It's the fact that parents making mistakes that could get their children hurt is one of, if not their biggest fears ever. And that's something that any audience member, whether they're a parent or not, can identify with. Because we've all been kids at one point. We know our parents freak out over the smallest things sometimes, but we know exactly why. And this movie takes advantage of those fears. It isn't just a sound in the distance or a creature that's coming to kill them. It's the fact that these this family really has something to lose, and that's each other. And the great thing about this movie is that it spends a lot of time just showing the family interact with each other on a daily basis, just be a family. And this family, in particular, I think makes a lot of smart choices when it comes to avoiding different noises, like the fact that they eat with their hands. When they play Monopoly, they use these felt pieces and roll the dice on a blanket. Those, things like that I thought were really creative and clever. And there are even minor things that you notice in the background, like the fact that they're sitting on a bed mattress with no stand or anything, because, again, 
the slightest noise could end up getting them killed. And when I watched the movie for the second time, I noticed a lot of things in the background that I hadn't before that actually elevated the substance of the film and the story for me. For instance, there's that one scene where the family all go to their special place in order to grieve over the death of the youngest son, which is one of my favorite scenes. The mother, Emily Blunt, goes to the dead kid's room and we actually see not only his name written Bo on a picture frame, but you also see the planets that are hanging from his bed and like these paintings of spaceships on the walls of his room. And that's really clever foreshadowing from the pharmacy scene where he's drawing a rocket and it shows just how much he loves spaceships and it also does kind of hit the metaphor of him going up to the sky and things like that. Another thing I noticed is that when Reagan, the daughter, walks off to the grave in order to grieve, you can actually see their last name, Abbott, written on a mailbox, which shows that it is their family farm. They didn't just pawn it off of some other family who may or may not have been killed, which was one thing that I did kind of wonder the first time. The biggest thing that I noticed the second time kind of addresses a plot hole that some people have, because a lot of a lot of people I've talked to are just like, well, where did they get the electricity from? And I'm like, well, when the two of them, when the son and the father are like running to the house when they're in danger, there are these two panels that they walk in between. And I'm like, are those solar panels? That would make so much more sense. And you can kind of understand because like they're black panels and it's the middle of nighttime, how you can miss something like that. I honestly keep forgetting that John Krasinski directed this movie because he did such a seamless job, very invisible when it came to being behind the camera and in front of, which is something that a lot of actor directors have a really hard time doing because usually you can tell that they had, that they had a lot of creative influence in both sides. But here you barely even notice because he puts a lot of extra attention and detail to the size of a shot and what you see in the frame. And one thing that I did notice the second time around as well is that he uses a lot of clever symbolism involving colors, specifically red. You see the color red almost everywhere in the film. The red lights that they hang when there's an emergency. Of course, blood that comes from Emily Blunt when she's experiencing things. But one subtle detail that I noticed is that throughout the majority of the movie, Krasinski walks around in... A red shirt and that has two meanings one is just how much love he devotes to his family to the point where he will do anything to keep them alive but there's also a double meaning to it where yes he does love them and he cares for them but he's putting too much care and once I, as i said before over protecting them to the point of alienation especially the daughter and when he gives the sweater to his wife after she gives birth and he's in this pale white t-shirt it they've basically they basically switched sides once he notices and realizes that his kids are smart and capable of defending for themselves and blunt is now the overprotective one now that she just gave birth to a child and is more frightened than ever of making the exact same mistakes again and i swear this movie would not have worked had the cast been so perfect at performing these characters with as little dialogue as possible. The fact that they pull off so much with just facial expressions, body language, and of course sign language is really impressive. You can tell they put a lot of detail in learning how to sign and how it emphasizes the qualities that each character has. For instance, Krasinski's signing is very short, but it's also very powerful. He gets right down to the point and makes everything he says extremely urgent and so does his daughter too i should make this very clear millie simmons as reagan fantastic job i'd say it's an even better performance than she gave in wonderstruck which is saying a lot because in wonderstruck she didn't talk she didn't use sign language she could only write a few times and she had to give everything with just her expressions and she was great in that too but i felt like in this one she had more of an arc where Yes, it did revolve around her being deaf, but there was a lot of emphasis on the guilt that she carried over the death of her brother. And it is true that she can come across as being unlikable because she is rebellious. She is angsty. 
But when you're not only the only deaf member in your family, but because of everything else that's going on in the world where you're possibly one of, if not the only deaf person left alive in the world, that makes everything she's experiencing a lot more painful and a lot more personal too. One thing that I kind of felt the first couple of times is where her cochlear implant can, yes, it can admit a frequency that would disrupt the creature's hearing, but I always did wonder how come she never realized it right away, and watching it tonight, it hit me. It was because she didn't actually see the creatures until the very end of the film. Because in the cornfield, she doesn't even know that anything came by. The second time, she was too busy shielding herself from the creature in the silo. And the third time, it didn't even get to the truck, and it was hurting her head so bad that she turned it off. You can still understand, again, the mistakes that she, the mistakes that she made and why. And Emily Blunt, this is one of the most powerful performances, in my opinion, that she's given, because... Character-wise, she has to go through so much. Not just when she goes into labor and she has to really keep a lid on her voice and not say anything. But, you know, when she screamed the second she heard that firework, I always just go, Ugh, yeah, fuck. Every single time, and I just love it. But when it comes to interacting with her family, at the very beginning, she kind of has to be the one that connects each other. She has to be the one who's supportive of every single family member and try to assure everyone that we still love each other despite this one tragedy. It does suck that we're not talking about it, but just trust me. And it does feel a little weird at first, but when she does transition into the overprotective one, it still makes a lot more sense because she's the only one that they have left. There is... One thing that I think this movie could have done without, and unfortunately it is the brother Marcus, I don't hate Noah Jupe's performance in any way. He does a really good job, and he is one of the best actors in the film that really conveys the fear that his character has. But it's also kind of a downside because it's not that he's intellectually stupid, but simply put, he's just too afraid of everything. I mean... When he hesitates to do what his dad asks to light off the fireworks, I'm just like, your mom is a deep shit, and you are seriously shaking your head no because you're too scared, really? And then, of course, there's the other stuff where he runs face first into a truck or falls through a trapdoor in a silo, or, of course, when he's in the truck and he screams, Dad. And the sad thing is, I've seen behind-the-scenes stuff. That was his idea to put it in the script. And am I the only one who think that the script actually could have done without him? I mean, really. If you left Reagan as an only child, that makes things a lot more intense because there's even less people to interact with and less people to bond with. And if she's the one who sets off the fireworks and then runs up to the grain silo and has to rescue herself, that would be... A lot more intense because again you would have less people to depend upon and honestly that probably would have made her more physically stronger too i just love the idea of there being a deaf horror movie hero that just sounds really cool and that's kind of one of the reasons i want to see a sequel is because i want to see her and her brother interact with each other more because the two of them have really good chemistry as siblings and they seem like really good friends in real life and it would even tie into the messages, as opposed to parents looking over their children and children trying to gain independence from their parents, which is what the first movie's all about. Imagine the second movie being about the kids leaving the nest and having to figure out the world for themselves. That would further the story and the messages in a really good way. But all that aside, I fucking love A Quiet Place. I love the suspense, the tension, the characters, the performances... The very few times where you hear dialogue, it actually does work in the grand scheme of things. And the atmosphere is just so unsettling thanks to the sound design. I love the fact that when each shot is in a close-up, you can hear the sound very fluently. But when it's in a wide, it almost sounds as if it's completely farther from a distance. And it really makes the sound feel like it's its own character. Especially when 
the scenes from Reagan's perspective are completely void of sound, and it really puts you into that character's mindset. I could go on about A Quiet Place Forever, but I really don't have that much storage on my camera, so unfortunately we're, I'm going to have to cut this short right about now. Either way, I fucking love A Quiet Place. I'm going to watch this for plenty more times around, and I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching, and if you've seen A Quiet Place, you probably have if you're watching this video because spoilers, but... If you have seen it, what did you think about it? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews at noperfectmovie.com. And once again, thank you all very much for watching. Take care.